Welcome to KMC Vibes. This is another edition. Uh, today's uh, guest, we have two guests. Uh, one is uh, Juan Manuel, uh, originally Venezuelan. Uh, say hello to everyone, Manuel. Here I am, Juan Manuel Fernandez for everyone, otherwise known as Joe Lagarto. Okay. And also uh, Esteban from uh, Chile Asia Connect. Esteban, thanks for joining. Hello, uh, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm really happy to be here and, and let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, Juan, well, let's see, should I call you Juan or uh, Lagarto? <laughs> Juan, yeah, whichever one you prefer. I think Juan is easier. <laughs> okay, so uh, since you're performing as uh, Lagarto on, on the conference, um, so uh, what, I'm, I'm not a, a Spanish major, I actually studied French. Uh, what does lagarto mean in Spanish, in English? Um, the translation in French is lizard. Mm -hmm. So lizard. Lizard, okay. Yes. Uh, is it, that's like a, a good lizard, a bad lizard? A lizard in general. I, uh, <laughs> it, growing up, I've had, I, um, for some reason, lizards have been very, very present in my, in my upbringing. Uh -huh. In various ways. Um, I, I went to my father's farm a lot when I was a kid. And there were a lot of iguanas that I would hunt. Well, they, they would tell me to hunt and incentivize me to hunt them because they, they have some very uh, gamey meat. And, right, 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 right. And uh, I would love that. And consequently, uh, close to the beach as well, there are a lot of iguanas perched on the trees. So it's a very common scene to be walking around a, a, a beach and have an iguana just boop, just oh. drop right in front of you. Really? Okay. And okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, but I, I was also always fascinated with that. And with bigger like crocodiles, we were always told like, hey, you have to be, you have to be careful with this one, you know. Uh -huh. And I was always fascinated by by the size of of those beasts, and their uh, and how they hold like a heritage to a to an ancient time okay, in, right. uh, in very in, old in the history. And also another, another fact that really cemented my, call it inclination or towards, um, towards these reptiles is that, you know, Venezuela is also is known for its wonderful beaches, uh, Miss Universe contests, but also it's a fairly tumultuous political environment. Right. And uh, we had a president called Hugo Chavez who started some changes that are, weren't in total favor of, of the country and its decay right now is mainly because of his policies. And when we were mainly starting to see, when we were starting to see the effects of, of how the, like, internal things of the country were handled you, you start to see nationwide blackouts and one mm -hmm. of the first ones i remember chavez going on tv i've been trying to find this clip but it's very hard to find but he says like his public declaration of why the power went out was because iguanas were chewing on the cables right 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 and right. Uh, his whole discourse was always like of an external enemy and an internal enemy and some and he he went on describing people more and more um akin to to my physique because he uh, eventually said that the americans were the ones that were doing all were responsible for all the wrong in the country uh -huh. um and yeah when I would be walking around the, the country, people would look at me and would think, oh, oh okay, you're, okay. An, you're, the, you're the American, you know, you're, yeah. you're kind of the, the reason. So I also took that situation into being like, you know, I'm the lizard then. I, right. I'll be wanna chewing on the cable. Right, right, right. And, right. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, as a, in, in Venezuela, I always felt like an, in a certain way, like an American. I've always felt Venezuelan. I've always loved my country and my culture. But there was always a part of me that didn't quite fit. And I had, uh, I imagined that coming here to the U.S. to study in Berkeley, like I would suddenly fit in perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I did find some very good friendships and uh, 
one of them being with Japanese students from, uh, from, from the Berkeley institution. We bonded very well, but it, I quickly realized that I was also going to be feeling out of place there because if in, I was the, if I was the American in my Venezuelan circle, in an the American Venezuelan... circle, I yeah. was the Venezuelan. Yeah, exactly. So right. once again, I felt like, you know, like the re reptilian conspiracy uh -huh. of in infiltrated <laughs> society. So yeah, I, calling myself Lagarto after mm -hmm. a slew of, of musical projects that I've had over the past 10 years um, is kind of con uh, an act of consolidation for me of, of my personal history and also realizing that in this business you need to have tough skin you need to have cold blood and you also need to know when to bring out the jaw and when to sharpen your claws cause, <laughs> you, 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 you've got it all packaged together <laughs> sounds cool does that come through in the music you write as well 100 percent. it's been a while of kind of finding my own sound and i i went to berkeley uh Four years ago, I started my career there. And my upbringing was totally in like alternative rock, grunge rock, punk rock. Like my, my previous band called Retrovisor, we were playing festivals uh, nationally, touring nationally, even internationally. I, I got to play in Santiago de Chile in 2019, actually, in a, in a world tour that I did. Um, and it was very much the guitar-based rock sound. But when I arrived in Berkeley and I started realizing, yeah, the, you can find depth in a lot more genres than, than rock. And I was mainly caught by, by jazz. And to, put, like a, to pinpoint it, uh, I was very attracted to Miles Davis's music, mainly because of uh, Bill Evans's playing. Um, besides rock, I also really like the impressionist era of music in the 1800s where it was music where it kind of floated through different tonalities and different vibes it wasn't centered uh it wasn't as tonally centered as you would take of mozart or a bach piece or a, of a more classical era and the the chords that claude debussy was was using I recognized that they were the same ones that Bill Evans was employing in a jazz format. So that fascinated me very much. And I started studying on how to apply those chords to the guitar. And once I had them under my fingers, you know, rock is the most common sound that I can emit. So I, it became kind of my own little challenge to do rock you know play rock on the guitar because when you're when you're playing jazz you're not you're not making full strums and granted when you're playing with a bigger band that like you'll see it in the upcoming video you have to kind of restrict yourself to make space for the other musicians um i my my approach was still very was still very rock to those chords and to that harmony but now that i've been i've been at it for a while i've I feel the same thing of, of feeling a, like a transplant in each. But within my jazz friends, I'm the rocker. And within my rock friends, I'm the jazz guy. Right, right. So, and uh, <laughs> that's, I, I've tried to keep that as a strength as well by, by trying to learn and integrate different, um, different styles as well. I've been uh, delving deep into rap. At first, I asked other people to rap what I wrote, but it more and more it's been me uh taking up the emceeing as well and it's been it's been a fun fun learning experience that will will continue well it it i i really like the sound the flow is fairly um fairly smooth uh from the songs that i've heard um a couple of the tracks that, I, that i've heard the uh but uh punta Sierra, is that right Yes, Punto Cero. That was the first track that I released under the name Lagarto. And I, over the past year, I've been writing a series of songs and, and preparing a series of videos because I knew that I was going to have to be moving around the state. So 
I have a bunch of material ready for the following year. And I've had the, the great opportunity of working with a, a bunch of people within Berkeley, like uh, music producers. I've got to meet some of my heroes and actually like start making music with them. So I'm very glad that you like the songs that I sent you. And Punto Cero is a song that I wrote um, in between recording sessions. I was just like, this is a very intense feeling of change, of no, of kind of like when you're on a skateboard and you're about to go down a, a, a big downhill. And that moment of like, okay, I'm going down this hill. I wanted to capture that in a in um in a rap in a, in a rap song at the time, and that was the first song that I was like, yeah, I'm gonna rap this. And I uh, to put some of the jazz things that normally rap is in four. I wrote that song in thirteen, which is a bar of seven and then a bar of six. So then fixing the rhyme scheme around that was also an interesting challenge. Yeah, I was really, man, just the, the, the flow seemed really impressive. And thank you very much. It's, I, I guess, also with the background of, you know, kind of the, the um, bay, was that where you were? Yeah, well, there were various scenes and uh, well, it wasn't really a bay. It was, that was in Miami and that was on okay. the edge of the ocean. And okay. the park, okay. oh, I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 background really also also kind of helped to to add kind of a, a smoothness to it. Well, I'm a Pisces, so I'm very akin to water. Well, so you mentioned that you have a video uh, with some students. Can you give a give an intro for that? I'd, I'd like for everybody to to check sure. that out. Yeah, in 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 English, I suppose. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'd like to invite you to check out Bate el Cobre, my most recent single off my project Lagarto. Check it out. Okay. Um, I don't know, I try it in Spanish also. <laughs> okay. Amigos, por acá Juan, también conocido como Lagarto, los invito a escuchar el sencillo más reciente de mi proyecto llamado Bate el Cobre. Ahí se los dejo. Suena el despertador No significa que pueda escucharlo Levanto la mirada, ya no sé ni dónde estoy Voy pa' donde bate el cobre Otro hijo de exilio, un típico latino Buscando crearse un inicio Tropezándome de oficio en vicio Poniendo fe en el arte Oye cómo bate el cobre Planeta sin gravedad Todo empieza con la frase que te hace dudar Esto cómo se controla La afinación de la tensión que le canta el corazón La mano sobre la envoltura La estructura Pa' que venga John Lennon a ahogarlo con efectos El arte se reparte y la iguana se alimenta con el verde Viste cómo bate el cobre Paseando por las líneas de mi Manos, pasan años y vuelo más alto Necesito haber vivido un anecdótico Lufre de pobre, canciones que saben Cómo se va del cobre, cobre Bienvenido seas a nadar en las corrientes Más contundentes de estas mareas De este lado se crean parcelas de ideas Paralelas se destruyen, fluyen, florean al borde mis ríos de sustancias Mi fibra vibrante ras de la torrancia Aquí no se paga panza, escribe y compongo rotundo en mi mundo mundano Redondo, resoplo y retumbo Claro que he llevado tumbos, pero llevo mi rumbo en el desorden Oye cómo bate el cobre si quisieras de mí Podrías ingerir el elixir del existir sin insistir Solo quiero el mundo del Leros La musa dice ponle, no ahogues con Tecachi Spinetti su poema No te cortes porque aborde yo tus horizontes Con este deporte y aporte el doble o triple Quedarse imperceptible no es chiste Ya viste que voy paseando por las líneas de mis manos Pasan años y vuelo más alto Haber vivido un anecdótico lumbre de pobre Canciones que saben cómo se bate el cobre, cobre
dejan mi nombre Porque soy un rock and roll ajá. Y vine a dejar mi nombre Mira cómo va a fijar el sin rumbo a dónde Mira cómo va el cobre That's an amazing, you got some really good musicians in there. Wow, it, it sounds amazing. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, Esteban, what, any comments yeah. from you on that? Yeah, yeah, I was I, I was listening to the song and I've been listening Lagarto for a couple of days, like, uh, and, and I think, well, you have a, a lot of, you, you have talked a lot of, about rock music and also like uh, putting some jazz influences, but also it's a, the, the sound is very like, uh, urban music like from the city is like a new it's like a new concept including many different genres in your music so I, I think it's very interesting and and uh, something that I want to share before is that uh, this music like this uh, the, the use of different elements that for example for uh, people that like us are from South America but we take a lot of elements of every culture of every kind of music that we ha uh, we have access access to uh, like rock music rock music is huge in south in south america in general is i know it's huge in venezuela and chile is one of the most rock countries in the world i think uh, so it's it's it is interesting to see these like the influences and and how you are dealing with uh, uh, adding some elements and uh, having your own like uh, identity yeah and what you say about uh well first of all thank you very much to both of you for the compliments and also uh yeah um what you say about latin america integrating different influences around the world is totally true and about Latin America being one of the most like rock and roll, heavy metal continents in the world. Absolutely. Definitely <laughs> true. I mean, ask Metallica or Megadeth or, or any of those guys. They A love huge. touring South America. They Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, I remember in, uh, what year was it? They played in Venezuela as well. I, it was like a couple of years where, where they played, Iron Maiden played, Megadeth played. No, Megadeth, no, Metallica, Mastodon, uh, even the G3 passed through there. That was a good time. Esteban, if you could give us a quick uh, intro about uh, what you do in terms of um, the, uh, the industry and Chile Asia Connect. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not in Chile r right now. I'm studying in... <laughs> We are. We were talking about that. That we we are in different places, and and we we are not supposed to be in those places. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 in Liverpool. I'm studying. I'm a music industry agent, and also I'm studying here a master degree in music industry. Uh, but I run. I I'm, I'm the co-founder and the co-director of an organization that's based in Chile. It's called Chile Asia Connect. And we are a uh, NGO. We are a non-profit organization that uh, aims aims to support and to support the like the cultural exchange projects and the mobility of artists, especially music, uh, between our country and with uh, Asian markets. And we have a, a, a strong bond, of course, with Japanese uh, music market. And, but also we are not uh, only concerned, uh, we, we're not only related to like to promote Chilean music, but also we, uh, we aim to be a, like a uh, reference in the South American markets uh, for the Asian agents, bands, and, and different organizations that want to like to connect with uh, Latin American in general. Right. So right. that's 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 my organization, uh, and of course, I'm, I'm again. I'm really happy to be here, and I, I think I really think that 
uh, we have we have a lot of cultural difference uh, like uh, in 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 Latin America in general with uh, Asian countries that are really is a really different world and also uh, within the Asian countries the, there's a lot of difference between them but uh, but the the will and the the aims of, of people uh, people in Latin America is eager to know more about Asia and and in the past years there's a lot of more like influences or or things that are more uh, uh, it's easier to like to know more about the I don't know about the culture in Japan or about the culture in China more people is learning the languages so it's there's a lot of interest and we are trying to like to promote and to generate more uh, networks and connections between like uh, musicians artists uh, agents and organizations in, in in both territories yeah in in japan there's a of course a huge awareness of you know flamenco and a lot of the spanish dance styles and so on but just, Brazil. right right exactly um but the, kind of the in-depth there, there's not that much uh, information on the uh, in-depth knowledge of South America and Latin Latin culture. Hey, I've yeah, been it, surprised that I've seen um, Japanese, big Japanese bands playing horopo, which is a very uh, traditional Venezuelan genre, a very rural genre. But I've seen it's amazing, Japanese by bands the way. of that like on YouTube, and it's just like they're even singing in Spanish. It's insane. right, right. And that's it. it it's uh, really piques, piques my attention because you don't normally find like I don't look Singapore Horopo bands. I'm not going to find that. Not even in the U.S. Like if if I find them in the U.S., they're going to be like people from Venezuela playing the thing here. But I've I'm really fascinated by the the way that Japan also has a tendency to absorb and reinterpret different cultures. Oh, exactly. uh, I completely agree, and I, I'm gonna. I had a, a small uh, ex an experience uh, two years ago. I was touring with a band. We were in Japan, and we, with the University of Tokyo, we uh, organized these uh, like some seminars, some some workshops with artists. And there was a a big group of students, uh, Japanese students, that that they were really into like uh, roots music from Latin America. And they play. They have the instruments. So it, it's 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 really amazing to see that that kind of connections that you don't uh, you don't normally expect. Exactly, but, but you're not going to expect. Them. They happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, Lagarto. What is if you could explain very briefly what is like your specific interest in the Japanese market? Well, uh, first off, it was curiosity, uh, and it's been it's been rewarding to meet. Uh, different bands that have also shared this curiosity and, and the past of meetings we've been we've been networking and talking on each other's social media and checking what they're up to and it's 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 great like i i dream of in the near future to going to japan and so if i if i thought well if i can start making a little leeway here and there that's a that's a good seed for the future right well yeah starting with kmc of course yeah definitely um one one of these years we'll be back in person no hopefully. no one knows when hopefully person. hopefully yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh esteban um have you you said you've been in you've been to japan before uh yeah. do you do you commonly have some established connections uh with japanese <laughs> musicians or companies we are, uh, we, yeah, we have some connections, uh, but uh, but it's it's extremely difficult to to start. And we start like five years ago touring with bands. We had the opportunity. I, I've been in Japan. Uh, I, I don't know. I think five or six times uh, with bands always. And, and it's incredible, but the problem is, it's really difficult to connect. And it's, uh, for example, with uh, KMC, it's a, it's a really good opportunity to meet people and to start to establish some networks and connections. Japan is 
we, we all know that this is the second market, like in, in terms of the size. Sales. Uh, yeah. In, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's really di- is, is, is somehow different in many ways uh, how it works. And, and, and it's really important to generate information also and knowledge about the Japanese market and also about our like our local markets, our local uh, tendencies, uh, trends, or whatever. Uh, so it's it has been difficult, but yeah, we have some connections. We are willing to like to connect more and more and uh, like progress in in, in in terms of that. Uh, so that's why we are here and um, participating, and we really hope that in the near future we can come back, uh, like face to face, and do things. And also, it's important for us also to like to bring music, to, to bring experience from Japan and from Asia in general to South America. Well, um, I, I hope that for for both of you, um, KMC can be some uh, a productive start. Um, Lagarto, I look forward to your performance. Um, you're performing on, as I remember, September 18th, sep- September 18th right? Yes. Yes. Midday uh, uh, Japan time and 10 p.m. my time. Okay. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Um, definitely looking forward to that. And um, Esteban, uh, I hope that we can definitely establish some relationships and. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, connect you with some uh, Jap- Japanese musicians for this year. <clears throat> uh, any, yeah, this is any, great. Any final words, uh, Lagarto? Well, yeah. Um, if any, thank you very much for the opportunity. And anyone watching, I'd like to invite you to check out my page and Jo Lagarto, Jo as in Y O underscore Lagarto, L A G A R T O, on every social media platform. And uh, I'd like to invite you to be there on September 18th because other than playing a sick concert, I'm going to be releasing uh, my next music video live with everyone. So it's going to be a fun experience. Okay, cool. Uh, Esteban? Yeah, I, I want to like to, uh, to say that, yeah, it's to in- encourage people to to listen about a uh, latin american market music markets and uh, latin american music there's a lot of things going on it's not like only one specific genre or one specific like stereotype is there's a lot of things happening in latin america in terms of every genre uh, it's really interesting so Check out the music. Check out Lagarde, of course, and and there's a lot of things. And and we really hope, re- really hope that like the connections between uh, our continent and your continent uh, will increase in the next in the next years. We we are aiming to collaborate and to generate more connections. Right. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully, we can all make some good connections and come out of this a little stronger, stronger bridge connected. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. So uh, thanks again, you guys, for joining. Um, Yes, this is uh, KMC Vibes for today. Again, uh, KMC uh, 2021, the 12th edition of KMC will be um, January. (laughs) will be uh, September 17 through 19. Uh, stay tuned, check out the website, www.kansaimusicconference.com, and I'll see you next time. All right, peace.